Hello and welcome everyone, thank you very much for tuning in to another video which is match week number 6 of the 21-22 Premier League season. <clears throat> now, let's have a quick look at how everyone did in match week number 5. I, meh, I got two perfect scores. Um, Burnley nil, Arsenal 1 and West Ham 1, Manchester United 2. Uh, so I got 9 points, so that was a, that was a good, good score for myself uh top scorer in the comments was jb and jb managed to get to 12 points so very very well done jb but we move into match week six and uh again there are some really interesting games here um i've picked out three which i think are very very interesting chelsea against manchester city that's a huge huge game um arsenal tottenham north, <clears throat> north london derby of course and also Crystal Palace against Brighton, the M23 derby. Yeah, don't don't ask, don't ask how that is a uh, is a derby, but it is. But we will go and check out these games as well. So, first off, we have Chelsea against Manchester City. It is two wins to Chelsea and three wins to City. The last one was a three-one win to Manchester City. Chelsea are just going from strength to strength, aren't they? A 3-0 win over Tottenham. Yes, I know the first half wasn't great. I know the first half wasn't great from, from a Chelsea point of view. But Tuchel made a sub. He brought on N'Golo Kante for Mason Mount and it worked to perfection. Obviously, Kante did get the deflected goal. And, you know, Thiago Silva scored very early on in the second half. Chelsea just dominated after that. And... I've been very impressed with Chelsea. I think, you know, defensively, they've been really, really good. They've only conceded one goal this season as well. So, you know, Chelsea have, have started the season really, really well. And I think it's only going to get better for them. Man City, 0-0 with Southampton. Only one shot on target. I think that's a big, big worry for, for Manchester City fans as well. Um, one shot on target against Southampton. Were, they were lucky not to concede a penalty. Um, I don't think Kyle Walker should be sent off. Um, you know, you've got that double jeopardy rule. I think they've scrapped that anyway. But it was a penalty. And I don't understand why John Moss has, you know, overturned it or anything like that. So City City were very, very poor against Southampton. And to be fair, you know, they did get that offside goal in the end. And yes, it was offside because, you know, Sterling is judged to be a little bit further uh, from you know Phil Foden and that was that was offside so but um, interesting game this one because Tuchel has actually got Pep's number you'd have to say um, you know they he did beat Man City in the league he beat Man City in the League Cup and also the Champions League so will Tuchel's um, hold over Pep Guardiola continue I'm going to say it does, and I'm actually thinking that Chelsea will win this one, and I'm going to say Man City will go another game without scoring on a goal. I think Chelsea are going to win this one, and I'm going to go for a 2-0 win to Chelsea. I actually think Chelsea could actually you know, win that, uh, win that game. So I'm going to go Chelsea 2, Manchester City 0. And now another game at 12.30. We have Manchester United against Aston Villa. Four wins to United and one draw. The last was a 2-1 win to Manchester United. Manchester United getting a very good 2-1 win away at West Ham. Um, well, this game was shared with controversy, wasn't it? Um, you know, look, I think, I think West Ham played well in that first half. But that second half, Manchester United completely dominated. Um... Yes, I know that you know the equalised um, Ronaldo equalised. Well, Ronnie does, doesn't he? But uh, that you know, first half I didn't think they were that great, but you know the second half they completely dominated. And you look at the way that uh, you know Manchester United. Look, yes, I know Ronaldo should have had a couple of penalties. Oh wait, first one, no. Uh, I think first one. I think he's. Um, I think I think he I think that's a that's a debatable one. Second one, I don't know. I don't know. The third one for me is, I mean, if that's not a penalty, I don't know what is because Zuma has completely missed the ball. 
He's taken Ronaldo down. My only worry is that I actually think Ronaldo's potentially going down before the contest there. I think he's already going down. If he stays a split second on his feet longer, then I think the penalty is given. But I think because he's going, he's potentially going down before the contact, then you know that maybe that's why it wasn't given. But Martin Atkinson had a terrible game anyway. So this is going to be a really interesting game because Aston Villa are coming off the back of a three 0 win over. Um, Everton, absolutely fantastic performance. Matty Cash getting a, a very rare uh, goal. Great to see Leon Bailey as well. Um, his corner uh, posed a lot of threats, and uh, Dinia headed it into the back of his own net, and then he gets it on the score sheet as well. Lovely finish, top corner. So, Aston Villa, Manchester United. It's it's one of those big big fixtures. Um, this is also at twelve thirty actually. Um, I was trying to work out how, but. Um, Obviously, it must be must be to do something with the uh, the kickoff times anyway. But uh, this one, I think Manchester United will continue their recent good form. I'm going to go for a three-one win to United in this one. And now we have Everton against Norwich City, two sides on the back of really heavy defeats on the last game week. Three wins to Everton, one draw, and one win to Norwich. The last was up to a two-nil win to the Canaries, which is very very interesting. Everton. Yeah, I mean, no Calvert-Lewin, no Richarlison, no Coleman, uh, no Pickford as well. So that's a bit of a worry for Everton, is that, you know, they are getting injuries. Um, unfortunately, it looks like, uh, well, actually, fortunately for Everton fans, it does look like James Rodriguez is going to be leaving the club. Um, looks like he's just not wanting to be there. Not wanting to be there um, at all. So... I think that's a that's a good thing for Everton. Get him off the wage bill, and um, you know you don't want an un, you don't want an unhappy player at the club. Um, so Everton, I I would expect them to bounce back, um, considering that you know they they are they are playing in the League Cup against QPR. That'll be a good game because QPR have started the season very very well. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how well they can you, you know they can they can do um, because Norwich City lost three one. To Watford, I uh, guess I know they equalised for Timo Pukki, but the writing looks on the wall for uh, Norwich. I'm I'm sorry to say, but I, at this moment in time, I just cannot see them getting any results anywhere. Um, and yes, I know they beat Nor uh, Everton the last time they were at Goodison Park, but I just got a feeling Everton will win this one, and I'm going to go for a two 0 win to Everton. I just have a feeling that Everton will grind out that victory. Um, and I think it'll be a comfortable afternoon for, for the Blues. So I'm going to go Everton 2, Norwich 0. And now we have Leeds United against West Ham. United 3 wins to Leeds, 2 wins to West Ham. The last result was a 2-1 win to West Ham. Uh, well, Leeds United 1-1 one, one draw with Newcastle. They should have had a penalty. They should have had a penalty. Um, I know Newcastle like to concede penalties, but... Leeds could have had a penalty. And they could have easily had a penalty. Um, look, it's a good, it's a good finish from Rafinha. It causes all sorts of problems into the, you know, the box. Um, it was a long, long cross, and obviously Rodrigo um, back heels, well, sort of dummies it, and it goes past Carl Darlow. Uh, but Leeds, ah, jeez, I mean, again, another game where it's, it's gone away from them, and they, you should have won. They should have won at Newcastle. Um, disappointing. Very, very disappointing for a, for the Leeds point of view. West Ham lost 2-1 to Manchester United. Uh, I am a bit worried for them without Antonio. I think they are a much less threatening side without Antonio. That is for sure. But uh, Antonio will be back. And I fully expect West Ham to go to Leeds. And I think they're going to get the win here. I, I just... I've, I, I just feel Antonio will bully that Leeds United back line and I think he might get a couple of goals good to see Ben Rama on the score sheet as well another fantasy football favourite that is for sure so I'm going to go for Leeds United 1 West Ham United 2 I do think West Ham will win this one and now we have two sides on the end of the narrow defeats in the last game week. Three uh, Leicester City and Burnley. Three wins to Leicester, one draw and one win to Burnley. The last result was a 4-2 win to Leicester City. 
Oh my goodness me, Leicester City, I have no idea how you lost that game against Brighton. But to be fair, I thought Brighton were very, very good. The refereeing in this game was an absolute shambles. I have no idea why Vestergaard has been given a penalty against him for handball. Because first things first, Mopé is fouling Vestergaard. He is fouling Vestergaard, that's the first thing. Okay, second goal, there's no problem, because Welbeck, great header, uh, past Schmeichel. Um, ever, um, Leicester's uh, inability to deal with set pieces is really, really worrying, if you're a Leicester City fan um, as well. Uh, Harvey Barnes' two offside um, involvements in, in Didi's goals. Um, like, I think the first one, I think, is very, very harsh. I don't think he's in the goalkeeper's line of sight. I think I think Sanchez can see that 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 ball coming into the box. The second one though, he's right beside him. He's right beside him. But then but then again, you couldn't say that Liverpool got a goal against Leeds United that was similar to that. Fabinho, uh, Mane was standing beside Melia. So you know what? You know there's a consistency problem again with uh, with referees. But um, unfortunately, I just think Leicester City. <sighs> Didn't do enough. Didn't do enough to be Brighton. Um, Burnley one 0 defeat to Arsenal, and again more refereeing controversy. Burnley could have easily had a penalty. Um, although Ramsdale, Ramsdale did play the ball onto Barnes, so I can understand why that wasn't given. But Burnley just need to get wins uh, under their belts. Um, Sean Dyche has signed a new contract for Burnley, so that's a good good thing. So he will he will still be one of the most um, longest serving managers um, in the Premier League, that is for sure. This is going to be a tight game. I fully expect Leicester City to bounce back. I think and I think a one goal victory. I'm going to go for because Burnley always make it difficult wherever you wherever they go. So I'm going to go one nil to the Foxes here. I think it'll be a one nil win to Leicester. And now we uh, we have Watford against Newcastle, and there is going to be history in this game. Jared Gillett, uh, the Australian, is going to referee this match to become the first overseas referee in the Premier League. So very, very good luck to Jared Gillett. Um, you've probably seen him, actually. He, he was the referee that actually had the mic to his, his lips, so you can actually understand what he was actually doing. Um, what, what people were saying so but this is in Australia I don't think you'll get this in England unfortunately uh, but going back to the game Watford Newcastle two wins to Watford one win to Newcastle and two draws the last result was a 2-1 win to Watford great win for Watford 3-1 away in Norwich really really good performance um, Ismailia Sarr getting two goals Emmanuel Dennis looks a very very good prospect as well uh, Wolf, Watford are very very good uh, last week it's all about if they can get results against the teams in and around them. And this is a big game because Newcastle United got a 1-1 draw with uh, Leeds United. You know, when that Leeds goal went in, you know, the, the crowd were getting on Bruce's back. They were getting on Ashley, so like Bruce out, Ashley out. But then Alan St. Maximum, this guy is an absolute trickster. He's a speedster. He is a very, very good player. I've been very, very impressed with St. Maximum and... I actually think he's Newcastle's best player, apart from Callum Wilson, of course. So, yeah. Um, as I said, Watford do need to win these games if they want to stay away from trouble. I don't see them winning this game, though. I think Newcastle can go to Watford. And I'm going to say they will carve out a 1-1 draw. Watford 1, Newcastle United 1. I just, I just don't see... I don't see Watford winning this game. And it's because of the fact that they need to win against teams in and around them as well. So we have the uh, Saturday evening kickoff, and it's Brentford against Liverpool. Four wins to Liverpool, 1-1 one, one draw. The last result was a 4-1 win to Liverpool. This was back in the League Cup, 1989. So there you go. Uh, Brentford, uh, what can we say about Brentford? They were absolutely magnificent against Wolves. Um... Ivan Tony was fantastic. Christopher Iyer was fantastic. Christian Norgard in the midfield, really, really good player, and in Buemo, um, as well. Um, I mean, Ivan Tony could have had about four goals in this game. Yes, and he had two goals that were ruled out offside, um, but you know, penalty. It's, it's dreadful defender from Marcel. I'll get onto Wolves in, in, in a sec, but I'll tell you something, Brentford have really, really impressed me. 
they look like a team that have actually been playing in the Premier League for four or five years. I've been very, very impressed with them. And you look at you look at Brentford's side, and yes, I know that they 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 are going to have difficult tests come up, but eight points from the first was it, five games is cracking start, cracking start to the season as well. Um, and Thomas Frank deserves a lot of credit. Liverpool three uh, 0 one over Crystal Palace. Hard fought three 0 win as Jurgen Klopp did say. Um, look, I thought I thought we were we were good. We weren't great. Um, first sort of thirty minutes, um, we were quite poor, but you know we started to settle in. Uh, yeah, Simicas, he did have a very good game. Thought he was very lucky to not concede a penalty. You know, he has a guilty look. He was like, "What? Oh, what me, ref? What me?" Um, so I was. I was a bit worried about that, but um, nice to see the Africans on the score sheet. Sadio Mane uh, became the first player ever in Premier League history to score uh, nine in nine consecutive games against this, the same club. Um, so very, very well done to him. Mo Salah, get the other one. And Naby Keita with an absolute thunder volley into the back of the net. So very, very good performance from Liverpool. Now, people are joking that Liverpool and Chelsea have had identical results. I am going to say Liverpool will win at Brentford and I'm going to go for a 2-0 win to the Reds in this one. But I have to say Brentford have been fantastic and I, I, I think they will they will uh, bounce back after this one, I would have to say. But it's going to be a tricky game because Brentford under the lights at the Brentford Community Stadium, uh, live on Sky Sports as well. It's going to be a very, very good game and I'm looking forward to it as well. But I'm going to go for Liverpool to win this one by two goals to nil. And now we have Southampton against Wolves. We're moving to the Sunday games now. Uh, the last five meetings, two wins to Wolves, one win to Saints and two draws. The last one was a two win to Wolves. Southampton, that's much more like it. Going to one of the big teams and actually not not capitulating, not you know collapsing. They were excellent against Manchester City. Really unlucky. A couple of times they went into the box and if... if um, I think it was Redmond. If he has his, if he has his eyes open, he can basically uh, cross the ball into the box, and you know there's Elianusi tapping into an empty net. But apart from that, I thought Southampton defended really, really well. Bednarek was a very good player. I've been very, very impressed with um, Liveramento as well. I've been really, really impressed with him. Southampton will start getting results, and I do think that they will go away from that relegation zone. I, I don't think they're in any relegation trouble. I honestly don't. Um, they need to just pick up results. That is for sure. Wolves, mm, um, I am a bit worried. I'm a bit worried for Wolves, actually. Um, lack of firing edge, um, cutting edge, I would say, um, as well. Um, look, Marcel for the first goal is absolutely ridiculous defending. He's got his he's got his arms all over Ivan Tony. It's ridiculous um, for for him to do that. Um, but you know what? Well, Wolves did not play well in that in that in that game. Yes, I know Adama Traore hit the the crossbar, um, but it was a disappointing performance from Wolves. It really really was, and I do think that Wolves might take a bit of time under Bruno Lage to just to get their ideas across. But their last away win they did they, their last away game they did win away at Watford. But I'm gonna say Southampton just because of the performance against Manchester City, I'm gonna say that they will win this one. I'm gonna go for a narrow one 0 win to Southampton. I don't expect many goals in this game. But I am gonna go for a one 0 win to the Saints in this one. And now one of the biggest games in English football. It is the North London Derby and it is between Arsenal and Tottenham. Two wins to Tottenham, two draws and one win to Arsenal. The last result was a 2-1 win to the Gunners. Arsenal won away at Burnley, 1-0 as I expected. Um, you know, they haven't lost there since 1973. Odegaard with a winner as well. Um, Arsenal did look a little bit better. Um, as well, Ben White does still look a little bit suspect as well. So Tottenham will want to get get at that get at, at that Arsenal defence as well. But Arsenal two two wins, two clean sheets. It's been a good start. It's been a good um, last couple of weeks for them, and hopefully they will continue that. I think they've got AFC Wimbledon in the League Cup as well. That'll be a uh, you know I, I don't I don't expect them to not win that one anyway. Tottenham, that's 
Two back-to-back -back defeats now, 3-0 uh, against Palace and Chelsea. Um, my main concern is Harry Kane. Now, I did do a video um, on the World Football Podcast. We had a big debate about Harry Kane. I actually think Tottenham should not be playing Harry Kane because I think he is hampering their form. I really, really do. I honestly think he is hampering their form. Looks disinterested. It looks like the transfer activity in the summer has still got to his head. And I do think that um, Arsenal, I do think that Tottenham should potentially cash in either in January. I don't think I don't think nobody will come in for him in January. But you actually wonder if if he might go in. Um, in the summer, I think he will go in the summer anyway, but not motivated, I mean you, if you're not motivated for a game against Chelsea then, you know, how motivated are you going to be against a, a game against Arsenal you know, I, I honestly don't see it and, but he is a top scorer in North London Derby history um, that is for sure, he loves playing Arsenal, absolutely loves playing them and obviously loves scoring against them this is a really tricky one to call because, you know, Tottenham off the back of two 3-0 defeats, Arsenal on the back of two clean sheets and two 1-0 wins. I'm going to go for the Gunners in this one. Believe it or not, I think Arsenal will win this one and I'm going to go for a 2-1 win to Arsenal and Tottenham, that would be three defeats in a row for the, for um, for Spurs and I do think Arsenal will make it three wins in a row as well. Arsenal 2, Tottenham 1. And now we have the M23 Derby. This is on Monday evening. We have List, uh, Crystal Palace against Brighton. Two wins to Palace, two draws and one win to Brighton. The last result was a 1-1 one, one draw. Palace were... I thought they played really well at Anfield. I really did. I think the the way that Patrick Vieira's got them set up. Yes, the, the you know we've gone away from the pragmatic style of Roy Hodgson, uh, which was not great to watch. Patrick Vieira has got them attacking. I mean, Wilfred Zaha. Okay, Wilfred Zaha didn't have his best game at, at Anfield. Benteke. I've been very impressed with the way that they are actually attacking teams. Um, as well, when Edward came on, same same thing. You know, Edward nearly scored. Um, Allison did keep Liverpool in the game, but Palace, to be fair, I, it's a harsh three 0 Harsh three 0 you'd have to say, as well. Uh, I've been very very impressed with Palace, and I think the the performance from the game against Liverpool. Yes, I know they lost three 0 but I think they can take that into this one. But Brighton are in the top four how long that will be interesting to see but a very good 2-1 win over Leicester City first win ever against Leicester City in the Premier League as well so it's going to be a very interesting game this one uh, because derby matches are always interesting uh, that is for sure I am going to say though that the performance from Crystal Palace against Liverpool will spur them on to get this win. I'm going to say it's going to be a Palace win in the M23 derby. Palace 2, Brighton 1. I'm going to go for a 2 one win to Crystal Palace. So that's it. That's match week 6 done and dusted. As I've always said, leave your predictions in the comment section down below. And like GB, you will get a shout out in the next video. So Chelsea 2, Man City 0. Manchester United 3, Aston Villa 1. Everton 2, Norwich 0. Leeds United 1, West Ham 2. Leicester 1, Burnley 0. Watford 1, Newcastle 1. Brentford 0, Liverpool 2. Southampton 1, Wolves 0. Arsenal 2, Tottenham 1. And Crystal Palace 2, Brighton 1. So that is it. That is match week 6 done and dusted. As I've said, leave your predictions in the comment section down below. And we will see what happens in these games. Some very, very imp impressive games to watch this week. Chelsea Man City on BT Sport. Brentford against Liverpool on um, Sky Sports as well. Southampton Wolves, Super Sunday. Arsenal Tottenham, Super Sunday. And Crystal Palace against Brighton on Monday evening as well. So some really, really cracking games, uh, both at uh, the top and the bottom of the Premier League. But until then, it's goodbye from me. If you do like the content, please hit that subscribe button, drop a like on the video as well, and enjoy the uh, match week number six. And if you're going to a game, enjoy yourselves, be safe, and yeah, Chelsea Man City is a, a huge, huge game. Arsenal Tottenham as well. And uh, will Arsenal make it three wins in a row? Will Chelsea's uh, hold over Manchester City, especially for Thomas Tuchel, continue?
we shall see and i'll see you all in the next video take care bye bye for now enjoy the football cheers <laughs>